Good evening, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, Joy, would you please call the roll? Hamilton? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Rivalinski? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Ledger Kalin? Yes. Hamas? Yes. Howie? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Council, before we proceed to our consent agenda, I do want to add a an update presentation from a representative from Burbach Aquatics who's here this evening. Uh, they had a meeting this afternoon with uh, Derek Wolfcool and they want to update us on the progress of the pool engineering and design. Uh, so we'll add that under the uh, public forum appearances. Any other additions or changes? Um, we're discussing several items uh, concerning the water and sewer committee meeting that we had and there were a couple of items that I had requested that I didn't receive by meeting time tonight so I would just like to um, forego where that committee report is at the end of the council meeting. Okay that's fine so water and sewer will postpone that. Any other changes or additions? Now we'll move to our consent agenda, just three items. We have minutes from the February 10th council meeting, approval of a liquor license for the quality quick stop, and approval of claims in the amount of $173,603.50. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve. Moved by Hamilton. Second. Second by Rasmussen. Uh, please call the roll. Hamilton. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. Hamas. Yes, but abstain on the minutes. Flournoy? Yes. Halley? Yes. Ledger Kalin? Yes. Revolinsky? Yes. Great, thank you. So we'll move to our uh, presentation by our Burbank representative. Join us at the podium. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Andy Pennekamp uh, with Burbank Aquatics. And I'm really just here to update you on the progress. Um, we're looking at going out to bid here soon. So, um, start out a little bit, explain what the next steps are. Right now we're in design and the next step would be moving into bidding and then construction. Um, and to proceed with that, at the next city council meeting we've uh, talked about having the city council look at doing a resolution to move forward with bidding and uh, at the next meeting then uh, Melanie and, and Kevin will have a board to present of the final layout. There's been some changes made today and a couple other things going on with the design. So we'll have that finalized before the next meeting and uh, Melanie from uh, French Renneker will help out with that. Um, so as far as phase three, which is our uh, bidding, I'd like to explain that just a little bit while I'm here. Uh, what we do there is we split our contract into three prime contractors which allows uh, your local generals to bid on the project. Um, pools are extremely specialized. So the two other contracts are for the concrete for the pool and the process piping for the pool. So by splitting that into three, as I said, the general contract for the buildings, the fencing, sodding, excavation, that uh, you know makes it locally competitive. The other two contractors will use local electricians and some local excavators and, and that sort of thing, but uh, the buildings is a little bit more critical for your uh, local contractors. That, and that format also helps with the uh, overall project cost. So that's just a little bit about how our bid is set up. Uh, I'd also like to talk a little bit about the timeline, uh, give you an update on that. What we're looking at is the next city council meeting is March 10th. So if everything goes well and you'd like to proceed bidding, the notice would then go out that Friday, which is the 14th of March. Then April 10th, we'd be opening bids about a month later. That would give contractors enough time to review the plans and the specifications and put together a good bid. Um, then at the April 14th City Council meeting, that would be uh, awarding contracts to the lowest responsive bidder. And <clears throat> along with that, uh, French Renneker's been working with us and the city <coughs> to do some site work, uh, some grading outside of the aquatic center and um, some storm sewer, sanitary, things like that. 
and uh, that bid would be in November to do some of that work. So it's somewhat of a two-part. We're getting the main parts of the aquatic center out to bid here this spring, and then uh, this fall, when it's uh, more prudent for that site work to get completed, that'll be out to bid in November. Um, as far as the building and the pool goes, it's uh, the basic layout that was presented quite a while back, actually, a few months anyways. Uh, there's been some changes to the building to make that flow a little better and uh, some minor renovations that way, but the overall size and shape of everything is is uh, as presented to the public. So, uh, again, next meeting we'll have the final version presented. I didn't necessarily want to present that today because there are some modifications we're doing. So, But if you have any questions, that's fine. And actually, after the next meeting, we'll have the plans and the specifications available in the City Hall. If anybody wants to review any, and I'm also planning on getting a PDF for your packet that you can look at on your um, packet information for the next meeting. Yes? Andy, I have a question. So why don't you finish the timeline? So, okay, um, say we, we're we on the schedule that you started mm -hmm. with uh, for March 10th, and we uh, start the bidding. Mm -hmm. uh, so what when is the pool actually going to be usable? The pool would open uh, next spring. May 31st is typically when pools open to the public. Uh, there's ample time there. We could even push that forward if we wanted to. Uh, but typically we, we stick with the May 31st, you know, get that uh, last weekend in May for an opening. And uh, that would be on schedule for this type of bidding at this time. So, Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Council, any other questions for uh, for Andy? Appreciate you taking the time to update us. We look forward to our next uh, meeting. Sure, thank Great. you. Thanks so much. Council, our next item then would be to set a public hearing for our 2014-15 uh, budget, which would be at our next council meeting, uh, March 10th, as Ways and Means and uh, our administrative staff has uh, finished the budgeting process. <clears throat> we had a good review last Thursday, um, but we will hold our public hearing on the budget for March 10th, so I'd entertain a motion to set that date for a public hearing. So moved. Moved by Revelinsky. Second. Second by Hamilton. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Next, Council, you have a contract to approve um, with Pathfinders RC&D for work on the Crow Creek Watershed Project. We did discuss that at our uh, budget meeting as we were looking at all of the different elements that were going into the capital projects for this coming year, and there will be some work done on that watershed uh, that would allow us to uh, tap some grant money. So we do want to see this uh, work done. You have agreement in front of you to contract uh, Pathfinders to get that work started. I would move that we uh, approve the uh, agreement for services. Okay. Second. Moved by Hamilton's, uh, second by Ledger Kalen. Any other uh, discussion? If not, please call the roll. Hamilton. Yes. <clears throat> Ledger Kalen. Yes. Revelinsky. Yes. Hamas. Yes. Flournoy. Yes. Holly? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Next council, we have um, the final approval for a, um, actually this is a proposed uh, sanitary sewer improvements project, and we have uh, specifications. Melanie, would you like to lead us through that? Um, it is uh, accepting the project is final. Right. Um, this is South Main sewer. Uh, went from Main Street over towards D Street. Um, I will say there are some outstanding issues with the project um, related to the easement negotiation side of things. Uh, as, but as far as the contractor stands, their work is complete, and I'm I'm satisfied with their work. There, however, there are a few things that the the sewer department and Kevin knows about that need to be taken care of with the property owners. Okay. And then uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept this project as final. So moved. Moved by Hamilton. Second. Second by Ledger Kalen. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. 
And are some of those other issues, some of the landscaping yes. issues, things like that, that'll probably be addressed when the ground, when the four feet of frozen ground thaws? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, next, we have um, a public hearing on improvement of the uh, sanitary sewer treatment system. Mm -hmm. I have a mic. No, Mr. Wong. Mm. What's that? Thank you, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. We have an I'm sorry. The engineering services agreement uh, for 12th and Burlington intersection design and engineering, and this is the project that we discussed uh, where there would be uh, some safety enhancements for the traffic lighting. There would be uh, crosswalks that would be what's the proper term? Stained. Stained. And uh, sorry, we Sense would be yeah we would be yeah, using some community. Right. Community transformation uh, grant funds, uh, along with some of the surf funds that uh, we will have for the coming year. Uh, as you know, that uh, Daryl Biscard has part of that in his budget as well. Uh, so we would like to begin uh, engineering services on that project. So we have an agreement with uh, French Rennecken Association and Associates for approval. Move to approve. Move by Hallie. Second. Second by Ledger Kalen. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Now we get to our public hearing on improvement project for the sanitary sewer treatment system. Uh, Darren, can you introduce this for us? Um, the overall discussion for the public hearing portion is uh, if there is any more input as far as which of the two site locations uh, at the treatment plant are concerned, I would I would uh, accept that at this time. Um, myself, I haven't heard any more input from anyone, and the committee has met over um, what we would like to discuss and the action action items to uh, follow. Um, but the overall treatment. Sewer treatment system um, we're looking at in two directions. Facilities plan for the facility itself and its location, and then also the conveyance system, um, which is the piping that will bring everything down to the plant. And we have those two facility plans that we'll review next. So okay, the public the, hearing portion was just over the... Uh, so we'll open, open the public hearing... Uh, at this time and ask if there's anyone who would like to address uh, the siting plans. Now, Darren, have, um, has the council been presented, the full council been presented to the options for the basins? Um, no, we haven't, but Mike Starkey from um, McClure Engineering is here to go over that. Okay. Okay, Mike, thank you. Um, what we're presenting on today for this public hearing is um, is the final location for your flow equalization basin at the wastewater plant, and uh, we had the let me, we had the first public hearing back in September of last year. We were here leaving that we uh, uh, decided to look at two options in greater detail at that point. So we have went back and did additional soil borings at both of the possible sites that we were looking at and from there did a more thorough cost evaluation and recommendations and that's what we've presented to the subcommittee and I'll go through at this point. But the two sites that we were looking at was the what we call the West EQ Basin which um, is highlighted with two uh, colors here are the, the light blue areas. These are lands that we would recommend that is required for purchasing. And the red are areas that we are suggesting for waivers, which would basically is just an agreement the city would achieve with these landowners to, with the understanding that in the future, if they, if any expansion or or whatever needed to happen, you would have that ability to expand your your basin. So uh, the other site that we looked at 
meaning site was the north site here. Hope everybody can can see that. But uh, the brown land was the land that we were looking to require to be purchased, and the purple or pink would be lands that we would be required to receive waivers from. Um, what we found is that with the north site that there was a lot more construction issues. Uh, it's a steeper hill. Um, there's a lot more dirt to be moved. And when we did the, the soil borings, we found that there was more groundwater and less desirable sand and soils to deal with there that was so it would be more costly in both construction methods and long-term uh, constructability. Mike, can you do actually describe that yes. also because you are you are talking about a large berm on that? Yes, sir. I was getting, so, just getting, getting ready to go through that. The, the, what we're looking at here is the, the large conveyance or gravity sewer that's coming out of the plant that is uh, that we're talking about, the trench ranker that they're designing, comes right down through and it's at the edge of this the lagoon itself, so it's in the the uh, the berm itself, which is not a problem today, shall we say, but in the future, should you ever have to get in there and work on it, just basically as deep as it would be, it would require you to remove or lose half of your basin at that time. Additionally, this is a steep hill, so what we're doing is uh, shaving from the high spot and moving it down to the low spot, and as you do that, that's just never really a desirable action if you can avoid it just because of you and no matter how well it, it just doesn't settle as good as flat land so it's doable but it's not desirable so all of those items really uh, added to the total construction cost for this option was four million and when you compare that to the west we came up with our opinion of construction cost for the West is 2.9, so we have roughly a million dollars difference between the two options. Um, there is Although that does equalize a bit when you factor in. Yes, I was just getting ready. Okay. <laughs> and that was a just let him talk, Mayor. No, that's, that's, fine. that's fine. So the that's other op the the other part that comes into that is that the fact that we the land prices that you'd have to purchase. So we have looked at that and uh, what the appraised values and so forth have been for these areas and we estimate for the north site that a total with land purchases and waivers can, we estimate it to range anywhere from 4.4 to 4.6 million dollars and when we look at the west side we estimate that range to be anywhere from 3.4 to 3.9 so looking at the the highest cost on the west versus the the best case scenario on the north we still see that there's a four and a half to five hundred thousand dollars difference uh i hesitate to you know these are our estimates as far as what the high end those are all negotiations and uh the land acquisition costs are all to be so but but uh we don't foresee or anticipate nearly that the land costs would overcome that million dollars yes sir Thank so you. just kind of Go, go over for us. Well, mm -hmm. basically, we're going to put a lagoon here. E either way, the idea was that it was going to go before in the north. Now it'll be towards the west, mm -hmm. and so that'll be where the, the water, when it comes in, it'll get stored there before we're able to treat it. Is that the idea? Yes. So what will happen is the coming out of the SSES study and that we had done for you, we are finding that you guys are having up to uh, forty-two million gallons per day per hour flow coming out of the plant, which is much higher than the capacity of the plant that you could design. So what we are doing is building you a flow storage or flow EQ basin that as the flow comes in there, we will uh, reduce flow down to 9 million gallons per day and let that flow go through. But everything in excess of 9 million gallons a day would get pumped up to the, the flow EQ basin and be stored. And then after the storm event passes or flows fall below that 9 million gallons per day, then you'll have the ability to return the flow down to the plant and treat it. I mean, we have enough pumps to pump it. I mean, there's a lot of water. Yes, yes, sir. That's all part of the design. So you you pump now. You just, uh, you're just you just not able to handle the 42 million gallons per day. It's more like 
10 or 12. And that uh, size and is estimated on the largest rainfall we've had? Yeah, we've, yes, it's, uh, it's based on a 25 year, I think, a, I think it's a 10 year storm, but, uh, but we looked at it like you had two storm events back to back, like two days. So we tried to, to be as conservative as we can. Like how many inches of rain would that mean? Uh, I I think it's like two and a half inches. Two and a half inches. I think in an hour. Four point six in twenty four hours. Okay. So. And then another four point six in the next twenty four hours. Yeah. Oh. So. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, and you do have you have you. The benefit of the west over the north too is that we can get you twenty million gallons right now for less cost. Where on the north, based on the layout of the land and with max we can give you over there is 18 million gallons. So you have 20 plus you have the ability, just say the weather continues to change or, you know, problems keep getting worse, you have the ability, God forbid, to expand further and store more. Is that why we want to buy that? Do I have an option on the red? Or is that we the, do something else with the red area? Well, the red. All you're doing with the red is buying permission to just expand closer to them so they recognize that they there is a basin here and that in the future they understand that if you guys need to approach them, you have the right to do that. And it also, what it does is you would want to make sure that there's no houses on this property right now that if he sells that property, whoever moves in there recognizes that you guys have a wastewater plant there and that they are moving into what they're moving into conditions as they are okay thanks mike yes uh can you uh, whether it would be you or why don't you go ahead because you are familiar can you talk about the three property owners that would be impacted yeah the on the west side is lila williams she owns properties d and e right here and then this property is f and G are owned by the Myers family. And uh, so uh, when you compare that to the north, the properties that we would be wanting to take, or we would want to buy this land here still from Lila to be able to cross over and do everything that we need to do there and maintain that. And then this property here is the Conger property. So, um, the, uh, I know that the, I guess you guys can speak more to as far as, uh, um, I think the next step would be to, to go and negotiate and have discussions with the landowner, the, to the West here, based on your, if you're in agreement with that. Right. Well, that would be the, that would be the next step that the council would take in approving the treatment facilities plan, which would have that. E West equalization basin mm -hmm. That's right. in it, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, there, yes. Um, okay. Now, I know the last time we had a public hearing where, uh, you know, the public was essentially given all of, a lot of the same information that we're receiving tonight, we had a pretty good turnout. Uh, I guess I'm surprised that we're not seeing any of the public here tonight, that they were aware that this decision um, was going to be made. After yeah. our after our meeting in September, we held a second public hearing similar to the one that we did in September. Um, I believe there was a larger number of people that came to that second meeting, and there was a better understanding that was imparted to all those in attendance of what was actually going to go on. Um, I think there was um, there was some misunderstanding. Uh, during the first meeting as far as what waivers were and how they were um, going to be used in this in this particular situation the uh, direct affected property owners uh, for purchase were at both meetings and um, um, one was very comfortable with it and the other one was resigning themselves to it um, but uh, the committee has gone over this um, several times for the last six months or more. And with the determination that uh, the um, conveyance system coming down and going 
underneath the uh, be the north and east side of the um, retention, uh, the equalization basin, and the long-term effects of maintenance uh, through there, the, the overall cost being slightly higher right now um, would end up compounding itself into the future with maintenance costs if we ever had to get underneath there. And of course, within 50 years, you're probably going to be looking at uh, that conveyance system out there again. Um, but uh, the overall size of the basins as well, we felt that uh, 20 million gallons is going to be better for our purpose at this point in time than what uh, just a little over 18 million gallon storage would be. And so the committee felt that it was best to uh, recommend to the full council that we choose the west site for the equalization basin. Great. Thank you, Darren. Any other questions uh, for Mike at this time, council? No, thank you very much. So we'll close the public hearing and we'll move to our uh, approval for the treatment plant facility. Uh, I think you have, a, you have a copy of that council with an executive summary. Uh, this is as presented and designed by McClure Engineering Company. Uh, and any other elements of that that, that Mike, would you kind of point out the, the uh, elements that are in the entire plan? Sure. Um, I don't know if everybody can see that, but I'll... Um, is it okay if I step forward? Sure, Mark, sure. Uh, oh, oh, I actually grab it. It's a, it's a uh, yeah. portable, so you'll take that. Thanks. Maybe the angle towards our <laughs> camera also. <laughs> little, Just little. get out the big hook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, the, uh, so coming down here, would be the the conveyance sewer, the 60-inch sewer that's coming in. This here is our influence and storm uh, water pumping station. From here, uh, flow is pumped. Uh, everything in excess of 9 million gallons a day would be pumped up here to the, the West EQ. Um, also housed here are screw pumps, which lift everything up to the start of the plant. And then from there, everything flows by gravity through the plant. Uh, your existing plant really has four limitations right now. Uh, things that you're dealing with that you have to struggle. One, it's the flow. You know, we've got to be able to, we're doing these improvements out in the system. We've got to be able to handle the flow if we can get it down to the plant. So we're needing to size everything. Take it from, it's around 10 MGD today up to the, being able to handle up to 42. Uh, two, a lot of your system especially the headworks and the front part of the plant is very antiquated and out of date. So with that, you got a lot of stuff that's just, you're not being able to get all the screenings and all the rags and all the rocks and the stuff like that that comes down to your plant. You're not getting that out of there. It makes itself through, through the head of the plant. And then you guys, you have to deal with it with pumps and it costs you extra cost of, breaking your pumps and things like that that you have to repair. So so that that's another issue. Um, the third issue is, is the new limits and rules that are coming from DNR. So we are designing this plant to be able to set you up for the future. So as those rules come in, you're best uh, capable to handle that. And fourth is handling sludge. You've made great strides in handling sludge down there. You've done some improvements and uh but uh we're still just with all this increased load and everything that we have there's still some sludge uh improvements that are needed so uh with all that being said the the influent pumping station pumps everything up to your headworks where everything is screened and the grit is removed so we're protecting all the downstream equipment there and getting rid of a lot of the stuff that that you don't want to have to treat from there uh we're giving you an additional uh, oxidation ditch. The, the plant right now has two ditches, and we're giving you a third. That's that's taking you from a peak today of three through there that we can hydraulically and everything you can handle nine MGD through your plant. So um, then 
from there, everything, it's also a DNR requirement now that with your new permit that you're going to have to be able to disinfect and, and your water. So with that, we're including UV disinfection right here. So that's another component. So that's all the, the structure is there. This is your existing sludge tank, and then we're giving you an additional sludge storage tank, and over here is your EQ basin. So when I say sludge, that's just the, um, the byproducts of treating the wastewater. So, and we get all this for four million? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, it's covered in your, your executive summary. It's that that cost is uh, a little bit higher than four million. So, um, as far as talking schedule and so forth, um, the next step here is to to for you to approve the facility plan as we've presented it. We have had meetings with Kevin and with the plant personnel, Sean, and went over there and made sure they're comfortable with everything that we're doing. Um, but this needs to be submitted to DNR, and it goes in with the IUP applications, which is your intended use plans, which is uh, it's basically starting the construction <coughs> loan process. So it's the initiation of that process. So. Um, you'll see when you're scheduled here, we have two IUPs. One is for the plant work itself, and the other is for the EQ basin work. Um, we separated those because they're going to be two projects. So um, they're two different types of contractors that do the work, but also since we're dealing with the, the land, the process of going through land acquisition or, or so forth, that we felt that the timeline for the two uh, were going to be different enough that uh, DNR felt most comfortable for that to be broken into two projects. So, and that's what we've proceeded with. Um, the facility plan will serve for both intended use plans, but it's just a, it's a, it's basically the submittal applications for two projects. Great. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Any questions? If not, then uh, entertain a motion to approve the uh, treatment uh, facility plan. I make a motion to approve it as written. Moved by Ledger Kalen. Second. Second by Hamilton. Any other discussion? Not please call the roll. Ledger Kalen? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Revolinsky? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Hamas? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Thank you. Uh, also, before we go on to the next item, I want to thank Mike and the folks at McClure for um, doing the additional engineering that we asked for last fall so that we had a, uh, a, a the most informed uh, information that we could have regarding the, uh, the engineering for the two facilities so that the public understood that uh, both options were looked at very closely. Thank you very much for, for that. Uh, next council would be approving the conveyance uh, facilities plan, and that will be Melanie. I don't have as many pretty pictures as Mike, but uh, I wore a pretty color to make <laughs> Well, yours are all underground, so. Yeah. yeah. Much farther ahead of me. Uh, <laughs> well, and you, um, through the cl closed session at the last couple meetings, you guys have seen the routes um, that we're talking about in this uh facility plan, so not much of it uh, is a surprise. This facility plan, again, is required by the DNR, uh, required to be written by the engineer that is doing the design work on it. Um, it outlines the concepts of step one and step two, so another plan when we move into the details of steps three and four would need to be su submitted to DNR at that time, a couple years down the road when we get to that point. Um, step one includes um, 20, around 2,200 feet of 60 inch that takes you from the treatment plant to about where the trail and 34, the, the trail, 34, Crow Creek Bridge, right in that area. So the boring under, thir under 34 would be a 60 inch pipe um, with a carrier pipe as well. Then you're looking at another 3,400 feet that would take you to Lampson Woods. Um, so you're looking at just over a mile of pipe on step one. That would be the work. Uh, as far as schedule, we're looking at bidding that around September. That depends on how the easement negotiations go. 
as well as um, archaeological review still needs to be done on the corridor. And that's being done by the state, uh, but we should know early, mid-spring um, if there's going to be any hiccups there. So uh, we don't plan on, but every time I say that, I get myself in trouble, so I won't say it. Uh, <laughs> then step two, we, there is stuff shown in this facility plan on step two, but we really haven't reviewed the route with uh, with you guys, haven't gotten into a lot of the details of it. Uh, basically what we're uh, showing DNR here at this point are the sizes, it's not necessarily the location, um, but we are turning that in for their review. That's it? That's simple, thanks, uh, we appreciate it. Council, any, <laughs> any questions for Melanie? And again, we did we did go over this when we were reviewing some of the um, some of the easements yep. that were being purchased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there aren't any other questions, I'd entertain a motion to approve the conveyance facility plan. Move to approve. Moved by Hamilton. Second. Second by Ledger Kalen. Uh, please call the roll. Hamilton. Yes. Ledger Kalen. Yes. Halley. Yes. Revelinsky. Yes. Hamas? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Thank you. And I also want to extend thanks to uh, Melanie and John from French Renneker for the work that they've done and partnering with McClure again to uh, get as much information to the public as possible about our intended development. Uh, next action item, Council, we have... Um, the DNR intended use plan application for the wastewater treatment plan. So this again would be tied to our uh, to our funding. Uh, this would need to be submitted, Kevin, uh, prior to us being able to access the funds, the yeah, borrowed funds. Yes, we have a couple of these tonight. So. Yeah, so we'll have it for both the wastewater treatment plant and the flow equalization basin. So we'll take first the. Um, Intended use plan application for wastewater treatment plant improvements. I'm just, if you had any questions. Any questions for Mike on that? No, I would uh, make a motion to approve the uh, Iowa DNR intended use plan application for the wastewater treatment plant. Okay. Moved by Hamilton. Second. Second by Ledger Kalin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed to the same sign. Thank you. And then we'll move on to the DNR intended use plan, application and wastewater treatment plan improvements for the flow equalization basin. I would move to approve that. Okay. Moved by Hamilton to approve. Second. Second by Ledger Kalin. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. We have a uh, final one, which would be the uh, the DNR intended use plan application for conveyance step one, as uh, described by Melanie, the portion that would be undertaken first. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Hamilton. Second. Second by Ledger Kalin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Next, uh, Council, we will uh, entertain a uh, let's see, 2080 agreement with Jefferson County Soil and Water Conservation District regarding the Crow Creek Watershed uh, Project. And Kevin, could you define the purpose of the uh, 2080? Yes, this is in relation to the work that we're going to be doing for the SWCD's portion of um, our, um, this, this is related to the SRF uh, interest payments the program that we're going to be doing. Um, this will be $250,000. It'll be for a miscellaneous, or not miscellaneous, but chosen areas around the uh, different watersheds around the city to help uh, basically retain water and, um, you know, help with uh, the different scouring issues that we have on Crow Creek, for instance. And uh, these may be 25 ponds. I'm not sure if we have a number yet, Melanie, of the actual ponds. We have some, cho some picked locations uh, that are possible, but... It could be 25 ponds for a $25,000 match. Of course, it could be, you know, 30. I, I guess you want to go into that for a second, Millie? Yes, looking at the agenda, I should have put the next one um, first. Your, actually, your next item has a description of how the funds and the sponsored project 
sponsors sponsored projects work. Um, the IUP applications that you uh, just approved total around $26 million. And with the sponsored project application, you can use 10% of that for water quality improvements. Um, and so in this letter on your next item, um, it outlines where the city would like to spend that money. And that includes um, within the city of Fairfield, uh, we're looking, the city, if awarded the money, would like to give some of it to Maharishi University, or I should say, we're going to be working with MUM on constructing a water quality feature on their property so that everything would be contracted through the city, um, but it would allow them to meet some of their master plan goals um, as well as water quality issues within the, within the watershed. Uh, we're also, also looking at uh, bank stabilization of Crow Creek and uh, possibly Indian Creek. Uh, Trails Council has seen some undermining of some of their bridges due to scouring, and so um, we can pull them in as partners on this project as well uh, to, to, to help them with the money that you get from your interest rate. And then lastly, the item that you have before you would be uh, giving money to the Soil Water Conservation District. Um, you can make the most impact to a stream and how much it flashes uh, by doing things upstream. So by building equalization base, essentially ponds, um, in the upper portions of the watershed, you can uh, make a great impact on the stream. So the 28E agreement would be, if this money aw is awarded, the Soil Water Conservation District can use their existing programs and administer this money. It'd be like the federal government giving them money, but in this case, the city is giving them money to continue to do, do the work they're doing. Exactly. And so we basically have it broken up. You have about a $2 million bill there uh, for the SRF interest, and we have it broken up between about $750,000 for the quote city, $500,000 for the efforts on UM, uh, MUM campus, and uh, $250,000 for the basins. Um, so we're go going in some different directions with the application, but um, there may be some small equipment acquisition through our 750000 and it would also be for pervious uh, or permeable pavements on our, uh, our two recreation projects, for instance, um, and some bioswale related to those construction sites. And it's not just uh, bioswales and green type maneuvers that are, or exercises we'd be doing on the MUM campus, but as well, we'd be looking at outflows that they have on various buildings and, and looking at how they impact, that campus area impacts the city's processes and, and hoping that we can combine our, uh, our two goal sets there. It's an excellent opportunity as well for MUM to enter into, a, a, I think, and to enter into a stormwater realm because it's, uh, it's a growing, a vastly growing industry and we all know of the different implications that stormwater has for our communities here in Iowa. So this is an exciting opportunity for all of us, I think. Thanks, oh, Ken. I'm sorry, Your Honor. This uh, money would it's it's administrated through the SRF, so uh, instead of our money paying interest, uh, sewer will abate that debt. Instead of our money paying interest, it would of course theoretically be paying for these exercises. Right, and it is available to us because we are deciding to plan for them as well. Right. Yes, we're we're putting in an application, and we think it's a it's a pretty rich application. I mean, it's it's full of a lot of good, uh, you know, uh, uh, different directions we're going in to address all the goal sets that they have as well. And I think they'll recognize the the value in our app, and and we're hoping to, you know, we've been partnering with DNR and the stuff we've been doing in storm or in a, in sewer as we did tonight, um, and so they're excited about where we're going, and hoping a lot of smaller communities will look to our lead on this stuff. Great, thanks. Any questions for Melanie and I? Pre Thanks for pointing that out. We, we could easily take uh, this uh, second resolution up front to, to approve those first. That's fine. If they both get approved, it doesn't matter the yep. order. Yep. <laughs> Any questions, Council? Um, all right, so now that we do understand the agreement that we're going to be getting into and, and how it would, it would be managed and uh, some of the money that would flow through that, we'll go ahead and take the first resolution, which would be entering into a 28 agreement with the Jefferson County Soil and Water Conservation District uh, for the Fairfield Sponsored Projects application. So moved. Moved by Hamilton to approve. Second. Second by Revolinsky. Any discussion? Now please call the roll. Hamilton. Yes. Revolinsky. Yes. Hamas. Yes. Flournoy. Yes. Hallie? Yes. Ledger Kalen? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes.
Thank you. And then the uh, second resolution would be for the um, sponsored projects application. And uh, what's our total on that? That's uh, one and a half. We're applying for 2.6 million. 2.6 million. million dollars is what we're applying for in that application. Move to approve this application. Move by Hamilton to approve. Second. Second by Rasmussen. Any other discussion? Not please call the roll. Hamilton. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. <coughs> Flournoy. Yes. Hamas. Yes. Revolinsky. Yes. Halley. Yes. Ledger Kaylin. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That concludes our business on uh, wastewater and conveyance system for this evening. Uh, it's kind of kind of exciting and <laughs> kind of scary at the same time, but no, we're sorry. we're on our way. And we again thank everyone for the efforts that they've put into this, including Kevin and uh, and the wastewater treatment staff that have been very involved uh, with our engineers as well. Next council will move to uh, first. Is this going to be our first reading of uh, ordinance? Uh, Tree ordinance? Yeah. Tree planting amendment, rather. Hey, Michael, do you want to take that? Sure. Well, in recent years, our urban forest has been under various threats. We lost uh, 50 oak trees in Chautauqua Park to oak wilt, trout, disease, or old age. Uh, now the EAB, the Emerald Ash Borer, is um, ravaging our ash population. And um, we've been working closely with the IAD, Iowa DNR to produce a comprehensive tree plan and a real uh, working model of how we're going to go about protecting urban trees and ensuring that future generations can enjoy them and all the, the many benefits that they provide, the, the cleaning of the air, the rainwater, the aesthetics, so on. So um, part of that is updating our tree ordinance. Um, another part is we formed an arbor committee. It's been very active. They are forming a comprehensive tree plan. It's almost ready. It's referenced in this ordinance, but not spelled out in the ordinance, meaning that the plan itself can be updated more easily than an ordinance, because it's not when required three readings from the council to change, um, including a list of appropriate species trees to plant in the right-of-way. So we've got these different threats to our urban trees, but we're also taking this opportunity to review our policies and just basically uh, move forward in a, a bit smarter way. We're not going to put a tall tree under power lines, for example. Um, and um, also, some of this language in here is specific to the emerald ash borer threat. Um, there are over-the-counter pesticides, insecticides, that DNR uh, regulates, but a person doesn't need to be an expert or any sort of uh, arborist to buy and apply. And so this, um, as per DNR recommendation, this ordinance does ban certain insecticidal over-the-counter remedies. So we'll get to it as we go. So the first sections are uh, cleaning up language and taking out references to a 1995 version and also including an amendment that was voted through council in 2010. When you get to section nine, it begins the new sections. Uh, the first section is the, um, the maintenance section. So it says private property owners are responsible for maintaining the tree. And if any part of the tree then causes a uh, public health threat that the city can come in and trim the tree or do something even on private property. So it basically is just <coughs> setting that out there that if it's, uh, if it's necessary, the property owner will be notified, but if it's a threat, the tree is leaning over, or a branch is coming down, or about to come down, the, the city can act. Next is the protection. Um, just some basic, don't want people cutting, <coughs> carving uh, public trees. So there's that portion. And then um, tree topping. Tree topping is essentially what it sounds like. It's cutting, cutting the very top of the tree in, a, in an effort to keep it from growing say, up into power lines or whatnot. The problem with that is it's extremely damaging to the tree and it can end up causing it to die much sooner. Um, so DNR recommends not allowing tree topping. Now, there are 
exceptions to any rule. So this isn't a, a big brother type rule that just creates more and more headaches for people. But we can let our, our utility company know lopping the top off a tree, not, not a good idea. We don't want to do that to our public trees. All it does is injure them and cause them to die and make us have to replace them sooner. So that is no longer allowed. And then section C is the ban on the soil drench and granular insecticides. These are basically top, topical treatments, over-the-counter products that are said to kill EAB. They might, they might not, but the problem is, is that they're dumped right onto the soil and they kill a lot of other things besides EAB. So those will no longer be allowed in city limits. And then the final section here is a lot of cities are doing this now, protecting what they call heritage trees. These are private trees. These aren't public property trees. These are trees anywhere in the city. Um, we named, we identified four species, oak, American elm, sugar maple, all oh, five, hickory and walnut. So any trees under those species that are greater or equal to 30 inches in diameter, say at breast high, so certain height off the ground, are protected, meaning the property owner has to show there's a, there's a valid reason for removing that tree. You can't just come in and cut down a really nice, uh, healthy, old tree just for the heck of it. So um, a lot of this language I got from the DNR. So it's not, not a reinventing the wheel here. We're just um, taking the best practices other communities have found to be effective. Uh, final thing is just a uh, change of wording. In the past, there was, uh, I think it was called the Tree Enhancement Board. So we're just changing that to Arbor Committee. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, the Environment Committee signed off on these amendments. And I'm hoping the rest of the council will see the wisdom and having a good plan, protecting our trees. Uh, as I tell my kids, unlike a wild forest, urban trees don't plant themselves. So they have to, we have to manage an urban forest. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't take care of itself. So um, this is a good start. Okay, thank you, Michael. Any questions? Yes, John. I have a couple. Uh, first of all, it looks like you did a lot of good work. There are a lot of good things in here. I'm glad we have three chances at this because the way it's presented here, it's really kind of hard to throw out what's old and what put in what's new. If we could have another version of this with just how the ordinance will look after all the old stuff is out, it would be easier for me to follow it somehow. I, it just it was very complicated the way it was written here, just for me to understand it. But um, the question I have is this idea of um, where is it? in the very first section, there was this thing about um, small stuff being prohibited in the uh, oh. small trees. The small trees. Okay, trees. Yeah. Any plantings less than trees shall not be allowed to grow higher than three feet. That thing. Now, I don't see that again. I, you, you repeal that whole section, but I don't see that particular thing. And I think that's important because uh, that means you could have bushes allowed. And that we, I think we put that in there relatively recently because uh, at, in some intersections, there's bushes, other kind of plantings that don't have the vision that, you know, don't allow the, the, the vision to, to see traffic, cross traffic. So it would be good to keep that particular uh, line in the new ordinance, I think, unless it's covered somewhere else in our code. I'm pretty sure it is because this was just an included the ordinance from 2010. If you remember that one, that did deal with shrubs or other plants. It's in another ordinance? Uh, it was in an amendment. 2010 was an, an in amendment. In a tree amendment. Mm -hmm. So that's where we just put it in here. But in your new, that you said you, re, well, this is the repealer. Uh, yeah. Again, again it's, uh, it's hereby repealed. So yeah. this whole section is here I repealed, and the new one, I don't see it in there. That's well, why, again, I'm a little confused about what's old and what's new. The John, you're worried about the vision safety rate yeah. at intersections. Yeah, is it, in the new, is it in the new amended ordinance? I'm not it's sure it is. It's in the original ordinance, which isn't in this particular. You're not seeing the entire ordinance. 
if you could see it, if you want to get a copy, you can get you a copy, but it's in the original. That's okay. Order. So the answer is yes, it's still in the original. Yeah, we'll make sure that it's reflected You can't, you can't yeah. plant too close to an intersection. There or put the, the, put the shrubs in there. Yep. So, again, that, it would just help to have, you know, what the ordinance will look like with these new things. And, yeah, no, uh, I agree. So, yeah, so we if we could have that next time, that'd be great. I, yeah. Those are my only main questions. I guess the other thing is, um, one large tree every 60 feet. Um, why so sparse? That was not, that's not a new addition. Well, that's here by repeal. Uh, yeah, are you talking about the Large tree should plant no less than... Uh, that might be the parking lot rule. See, some of this was put in before I was on here, so I'm not... I would imagine anyone who would put that in would be worried about the fact that larger species of trees need about that far to canopy out and, feet and feet support inside. each other through the canopy. I would so think 16 that's feet per side is not unusual for us. 16 feet is the each side, but it says you can't plant one every 60 feet. Yeah, not a lot. If you look at a larger oak or something, not a lot of space between trunk at 60 feet. Of course, the spread of the canopy might indeed be okay. 50 to 60 this feet one. apiece. Okay, those are my only questions, Mike. Yeah, no, I agree. This is the first portion. It says repealed and then amended. If you read it, it's almost the exact same thing. But the 2010 amendment, for whatever reason, took out shrubs. It stopped mentioning shrubs. I voted against that amendment because it had the uh, no fruit trees in the right of way, which I didn't completely understand the reason for, but it passed nonetheless. And so uh, this makes reference to that one. Michael, you are going to take on shrubbery in this ordinance, aren't you? <laughs> well, the original ordinance does include shrubbery. <laughs> mentioned it. This isn't everything. These are just amendments. And you're, we're going to be adding some, I guess, and maybe looking at new shrubbery. Or are we just going to keep the No, we, we can amend shrubbery if you like, but but the purpose of this was to deal with trees. protection so the, so of the trees. So the Arbor, Arbor Committee deals with shade only, not, not shrubs. Exactly, because we know we did look in the entomology of that word, Arbor. Yes. It's just shade. Just shade. <laughs> don't get much shade from a shrub. Yeah, one thing to point out here that's very, it depends, it depends on the shrubbery, but one thing that's interesting to point out here probably the time of day as well, actually, but um, is that this there, for the first time you see a specimen tree inclusion, or as we're calling it, heritage. a heritage tree, much better uh, verbiage there, but uh, specimen or heritage trees protected on private property, and that is a new thing for the city. Um, and it's also uh, an admirable thing for a city to do, of course, because it is uh, unfortunate when, when uh, someone buys lots or whatever with many of these wonderful trees on them and just simply cut them down, you know, for no reason, firewood or anything else. Now there will be, you know, if it's diseased or if there's a dangerous, uh, there'll be some review there of staff when we go out to look at these trees. But Yeah, there's a whole list of, you know, if the heritage tree is dead or dying or diseased, damaged or injured, um, could potentially damage property. I mean, there's a whole list of valid reasons to remove it. So it's yeah. not it's not really a hugely limiting issue and probably no. something that wouldn't come up very often. Probably not. I mean, I, I know that I may have faced it like once or twice over the years, you know, because most people do not want to cut down a 30 inch tree. So let me let me make a clarification here. So are we talking about heritage trees anywhere in the lot? Yeah, private. Yes, property. private and public mm -hmm. property. Anywhere in the not city. Not just limits. in the, the right of way. A true tree protection ordinance is basically what we're are gearing toward. Yeah, John, I like your idea of getting a memo version of of some of the proposals here and get yeah, that to the media also so that uh, city attorney we can really take a look at this. Yeah. Okay. I'll work with John Morrissey on that. This was, okay. I don't say rush, but I really wanted to start voting tonight so we'd be done in time for April before the ground uh, mm. thawed out and people started dumping insecticides all over the place. So I'll make a motion. Pass it from the first to second reading. Okay. Motion by Hallie to uh, pass the ordinance as amended from the first to the second reading. Second. Second by Hamilton. Any other discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Hallie. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Flournoy. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. Hamas. Yes. Ledger Kalin. Yes. Revolinsky. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Council, uh, we'll move then to our committee reports. Um, first, uh, Ways and Means. John, do you have a report for this evening, um, or is it I, basically our budget work was? Our budget work was okay. was conducted at our at our two Ways and Means meeting since it held since last council session. I, I, um, 
nothing specific to report on that uh, except the budget came out and uh, uh, please review it and we'll be voting on it next time. Great. Thank you, John. Uh, next time we'll have a report from the person personnel committee. Doug? Yes, uh, our committee met uh, on the 19th to begin uh, developing the mechanisms and procedures for evaluation of city employees. And uh, we started with the uh, top position, city administrator, and uh, identified a uh, list of stakeholders and some documents that we we'll use for the evaluation process. Okay. Thank you very much. And I think that, uh, Kevin, do you have anything to report in yours? And I do not, Your Honor. Thank you do any department heads have anything? There? Great. Thank you, then. Uh, we do have uh, some items regarding um, real estate purchases in our foreclosed session. So we thank everyone for their participation thus far and uh, entertain a motion to go into closed session according to Iowa Code so 21.5J. Moved by Revolinsky. Second. Second by Hamilton. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign.